Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If you like what you hear, you can press the like button. If you don't like what I hear, you can press the down button. Well, the down finger. And if you want to subscribe, please do. And if you want to share, please do. Um, today's um, video is... I'm not going to even say it's controversial. I don't. There's, I don't even know if there's a right or a wrong. I guess there's an in between. Everything has a grey area. But this is whether it's child abuse, whether it's self defence, or whether it's um, what's the third one, child or discipline. Now I grew up in an era where um, you got a click round the ear roll. It was more than a click round the ear roll. Um, at school, you got hit across your knuckles with a ruler. Um, you got the, the belt across your butt. And I think my mother just used her hand or her whatever to slap me with. But, um, yeah, I grew up in a time when, you know, discipline was a clip round the ear roll, as they used to call it. And then I raised my daughter during the same era and I used to beat her and I'll say beat rather than smack because it wasn't a smack at the time um, and my daughter was very very rebellious and it didn't well it was like um, a fight but it wasn't a fight it was just like you know when parents try to control their children and the children are really rebellious that is what it was like um yeah and now on reflection with my second daughter um it was corporal punishment i don't know if it was outlawed or whether i just because i i had her eight years later i just decided i was going to use a different tactic because i never hit her once the irony is is that you know um both of them are totally very, very loving in their own way, but totally different um, individuals. Um, yeah, so I have one that's quite, um, let me see, I wouldn't say, they're both self-sufficient, but one, funnily enough, the one that I hit was the one where we're, we're closest I don't think it's got anything to do with um, whether I hit her or not, <clears throat> because she'll always say to me, Mum, I always knew you loved me. So somewhere in that discipline, even though I was young at the time, I obviously showed her enough to let her know that I, was, I had her best interest at heart. You can't do that these days. You can't hit at all. But I've come across a couple of videos recently that I've been sent. And um, these are with teenagers, though. I think one is even older than a teenager. And then you have to ask yourself, at what point does smacking a child, your child, um, become appropriate if it does? Because you have teenagers who are attacking their parents. Like I said, you know, sometimes I work, well, I do work with domestic abuse. And sometimes, a lot of the times, it's the children who are beating up on the parents. What do you do then when they're no longer children who you can say, they're still your children, but they're no longer minors in the sense that these people, when you hit back, is it self-defense? Is it... Is it um, grievous bodily harm? What is that? So I'm going to show you um, the first video, which I think is grievous bodily harm. I'm not going to show much of it because I don't like it. It's not, um, it's not in this country. It's in Jamaica. The second one is in this country. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll just say what I said. But like I said, I'm not going to show much of the first one because I don't like it. Watch out! Oh my God!
Well, what's happened there is that the, the father, I don't know what the boy had done because to me he was just talking to a couple of other boys unless the father doesn't like the boys. But he starts beating him with the belt. And the boy, maybe because he's among his friends and feels embarrassed, I do not know, but the boy has turned on the father and knocked him to the ground. So what do you call that? When an adult, your father, mainly in this case, comes at you with a belt, he looks, the boy looks about maybe 15, 16, in front of all your friends and starts hitting you with that belt. I mean, he's going to feel humiliated, he's going to feel embarrassed, he's going to have all those emotions, and he's going to lash out, which is what happened there. But it's his father. At that age, does his father have a right to hit him like that with a belt, at what point does um, beating a child stop? At what age? And we have it in different countries. I think the rules are different. Now, the second one I'm going to show you is a mother and her daughter in a, I don't even know, I, I can only call it a fight, really. Which is, which is not as bad because, I guess, because it's not that clear. Um, this was produced by The Mirror. I think it came out yesterday. A couple of days ago, anyway. Hold on. And somebody's obviously taken this from their window. Hold on, I'm trying to wake it. Um, I don't know if you can see it. So somebody's watching this from their window. Can you see it? No, you can't see that side, isn't it? Anyway, a man's gone over there with a baseball bat to break them up. That's her mother and daughter. And this was a fully fledged fight on the street. A mother and her daughter fighting like cats and dogs, like two strangers. I mean, it's really, it's really inappropriate. Where does it, where are your boundaries? It's like when I see um, Judge Judy and I see young either the mother suing the child or the child suing the mother where does that relationship break down to such a degree where does it break down to the point where you feel you cannot talk to your child when they're that age and they you know and you can get a decent response is it to do with the mentality of the parents is it to do with how the children have grown up so, like I said, you know, we was, you know, there's a certain sector of us, a dying out race, who used to discipline our children in that, no, not in that way, but, you know, we used to discipline their children, whether it was a smack, I mean, corporal punishment was um, banned in 1987 from schools, there were some private schools that still carry it out, but, you know, at what point did it come to the point where it, was translated into bullying because that's what they say they say we're you know as an adult chastises a child I think they more or less mean a smaller child but I don't know where those rules I don't know where that delineation line is where does it stop at 18 because at what point does a child become an adult in the sense of disciplining because I know children are adults at the age of 18. But when you see some 15 and 16 year olds, they're like grown men and grown women. And they come and they're challenging you as an adult. Do you treat that child, your child, as an adult? Or do you treat it as a child? You get some children in schools attacking teachers. 
You're not allowed to discipline a child. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to hit a child. But you're dealing with adults in quotes. And when you're dealing with um, children who are not children in the way we knew children back in the day, where children were children, to be honest. But now it's like little adults are growing up. You look at little three-year-olds and four-year-olds. They've got an attitude. They're dressed like adults. I'm not so, not talking about corporal punishment now, or even any kind of punishment. Or no, I'm not talking about that now. I'm just talking about children, how they're growing up generally now. It's almost like they're different beings. One and two year olds are using the computer and messing around with androids. And you have to ask yourself, what are we dealing with? Does the look should the law adapt to who you're dealing with? So if you're dealing with a 13 year old who is still a child and who towers over you and is coming to attack you, are you still not allowed to retaliate or hit that child back because he's a minor? Um, your thoughts would be, I mean, I know some of you will say you should never smack a child at no time at all. It's bullying, it's this, it's that. But I'm just trying to get some kind of understanding um how how like in like in the first one where that boy didn't seem to be doing anything and the man comes at him with a belt i don't know for what reason i can only assume like i said he's not supposed to be on the street with boys he's supposed to be leaving school and going straight home because he was still in his school uniform as opposed to the second um mother and daughter who I don't know what the cause was because somebody was watching it from the window. So, yeah, let me just say some quick little bits that I've written down regarding legislation and stuff like that. Um, I've said, um, what happens when a child becomes a teenager and is bigger than you? Attacking, threatened, disciplined, self-defense. What makes people respond in the way they do? Do they feel threatened? And I think that's a lot of the time they feel threatened. And I think they go through this emotional relapse where they respond to that child as though it's an adult because he or she looks like an adult. But there should be an element of you. But the thing is, that's what I'm saying. You've got children these days. I've, I, I've got, like I said, you know, I work with domestic abuse. And you've got kids who are coming to their parents with knives demanding money for drugs. What do you do? The poor parents are petrified. What do you do? When does a child, well, how do you curtail a child? It's fine saying you talk it through and you give them some quiet time and that's supposed to work as they grow up. But supposing it doesn't work, supposing there's other things going on in the house that is, that is breaking down that relationship. Supposing the child is seeing conflict in the house or seeing the parents shouting all the time, you know, and they start withdrawing because, pet, you know, when children see or sense shouting, regardless of how much love they have, they will withdraw as adults. And that's what happens. And I don't think, I think, chill, I think adults back in the day did not appreciate how sensitive children were and how they picked up on vibes. They used to say, when a woman carries a baby, how she's feeling during that pregnancy affects the child when it's born. So if that child, if that pregnancy, that woman was happy and she was um, singing and, you know, just generally had a good disposition that child would grow and it wouldn't be crying and it would be a very very peaceful child but if that child was in that woman's stomach and that there was conflict in that relationship and there was shouting and cursing that child would come out of that tummy agitated and will constantly need assurance you'll find some babies that say oh i don't have to pick him up at all he sleeps like a, he sleeps wonderfully and another one will say oh he won't stop crying he's driving me around the bend normally it's because there's been conflict in that relationship 
And that child, as you, even though it's not born yet, will pick that up. And it's even worse when a child, even though you think it's sleeping or out of the room, when that child is hearing all that noise and the shouting and the cursing, they grow up to become withdrawn and then they grow up to become aggressive because they do not know how else to do, deal with it. And if they're not aggressive, they either withdraw from their parents in some way or the offending parent. Anyway, um, what is GBH? Was that man who was hitting that um, boy, teenage boy, could that be considered as GBH? He's got a belt. He's hitting an, um, a, a teenager who is unarmed, who hasn't got, can't defend himself apart from flinging down the father. Um, this is the most serious of offences and cares a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. Wow. I don't know if that was GBH then. The offence is committed when a person unlawfully, maliciously and intentionally either wounds another person or causes grievous bodily harm to another person. I don't know if grievous means that, you know, they've got cuts and bruises, but wounds, that belt could have got in that boy's head. It could have hurt him in some way. That would be grievous bodily harm, I would assume. To find out whether a defendant had intended to cause the GBH, and he would have intended because he came with a bloody belt. Or I don't know if he took his belt off. I didn't see it. It happened so quickly. It didn't look as though he had something in his hand. So maybe it wasn't intentional. Maybe the boy said something and he reacted. I don't know. It's not clear. Um, if you're charged with actually bodily harm, grievously bodily harm, or or grievously bodily harm with intent, your case will be heard at court. When a child tries to defend him or herself, is this self-defense or is this disrespecting elders? Is he supposed to just stand there and take the licks? Like I remember in my day, they say, stand up there and take the licks. You know what I mean? That's what they used to say. And don't make a sound. And they're licking you with the bell. I'm just like, well, I didn't get that, but I do see it and I have heard it. But that's what they used to do. They used to say, they used to be hitting you. And I was just trying to think of if it had ever happened to me. I don't think so. But I'm anyway, I remember, you know, they'd say to, they'd say to children, don't make a sound. And they'd be hitting you with a belt. And they'd make, stand up there and take the licks. You know what I mean? So if that child has to stand up there and take the licks... Because they've been naughty. So what is that? Is that grievous bodily harm? I mean now they, they can't leave any bruises. So I guess it was grievous bodily harm. Because sometimes you know you get parents who, are, who go over the top. And those child end up with bruises and cuts and all sorts. And, you know, with young children, it's absolutely atrocious. That should never happen. The poor child, how can that poor child defend itself? To be honest, if it's a tiny little child and, you know, like one of the mothers said, you know, she hit the boy on its hand because it kept on biting her. Is that allowed? Technically, it's not allowed. But how else do you tell that child it's not appropriate? They're saying, put it on the naughty step. Put him or her in the corner. Give that person time out. Supposing it doesn't make a difference. And then, you know, they're saying that's the reason why children are so unruly now. That's why everything is chaos. That's why you've got children on the street. Because there's no discipline. But I think discipline, there's discipline and discipline. And I think there's, in, in a lot of cases, discipline got way out of hand. And people, parents used to take their frustrations out on their children. Ah, anyway, in October 2017, a dad who allegedly smacked his five-year-old son on the bottom for breaking a plant pot was charged with assault. Now, that must have been an accident. I don't think that's appropriate. That had to be an accident. Not unless the little child literally looked at the pot and just decided to fling it over. We don't know the circumstances. 
The 25-year-old man claimed he had smacked the child as reasonable chastisement, but has now appeared in court on charges of assault causing actual bodily harm. Prosecutor Christine Hart said that bruising had appeared on the young boy after the alleged assault on the 23rd of May. I don't know which year this is. But defence lawyer Greg Peters said his client did not accept the bruising had been caused by the smack at the man's home in Charles Somerset. Somerset Magistrates Court in Yeovil was told that father who cannot be named for legal reasons admitted to hitting the child but said it was not enough to have caused the injury. The dad did not enter any pleas. So generally arguments for light smacks are made on the basis that mum knows best or dad knows best. It's a deterrent for more serious disobedience and biting and that it is never did the parent any harm. Peter Andre said, listen, when I was growing up, my brothers and I were smacked. It didn't do me any harm. What constitutes common assault? Grises, scratches, abrasions, minor bruising, swellings, reddening of the skin, superficial cuts, a black eye. And while it's still legal to hit students in private schools in some states, in practice, very few schools impose corporal punishment. First banned in 1987, ban repealed in 1989, but was in disuse. My alarm's gone off and I'm going to have to run up and take it off because I've got to go to work. Effectively, corporal punishment was abolished in ed by education department policy in 1987. What is the law on smacking children? It is unlawful for a parent or carer to smack their child except where this amounts to reasonable punishment. Don't know the definition of reasonable punishment. The defence is laid down in section 58 of the Children Act 2004 but is not defined in this legislation. Whether a smack amounts to reasonable punishment will depend on the circumstances of each case, taking into consideration factors like the age of the child and the nature of the smack. There are strict guidelines covering the use of reasonable punishment and it will not be possible to rely on the defence if you use severe physical punishment on your child, which amounts to wounding, actual bodily harm, grievous bodily harm or child crude cruelty. How to discipline without smacking? Give love and warmth as much as possible. Have clear, simple rules and limits. Be a good role model. Praise good behaviour so it will increase. Ignore behaviour that you don't want repeated. Criticise behaviour, not your child. Reward good behaviour with hugs and kisses. Distract young children or use humour. Remove privileges. Give time out. Allow children some control, joint decision and choices. What is the guidance of National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, NSPCC? It can be tempting to think a smack sort, sorts out incidents like disobedience and biting. However, it does nothing to teach your child how you want him or her to behave. Instead, it gives a bad example of how to handle strong emotions. It may lead children to hit or bully others. It may encourage children to lie or hide feelings to avoid smacking. It can make defiant behaviour worse, so discipline gets even harder. It leads to resentful and an angry child and damages family relationship if it continues. All parents have behaved in ways they regret, at times, shouting or smacking. If it happens, say you're wrong. Make up and try again. This teaches the child a valuable lesson. Uh, calls to ban smacking. There's a huge pressure from different organisations in the UK to change the law relating to reasonable punishment. Organisations such as the NSC, NSPCC and 11 million campaign for a complete ban on reasonable punishment. There are concerns that Section 58 Children Act 204, 2004 continues to breach Article 19 United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child by failing to provide children with equal protection under the law on common assault. A parent can be charged with criminal offence if they harm their child under certain offences. So I still think reasonable, it all depends on the def definition of reasonable. And your comments would be appreciated. Bye for now. I've got to turn off my alarm and get ready for work. Bye.